show how the new B-Series Pin Master, the MW82119B, give you a demonstration of how it works. The B-Series Pin Master includes both PIM capability as well as a built-in site master. So what this allows us to do is to complete all of our standard sweep testing at a site as well as perform PIM testing with a single instrument. So the way this works is, in the menu button, I can choose whether I'm operating the instrument as a cable and antenna analyzer to do sweep testing or choose whether I'm doing PIM testing. So the right process is to always start with your, with your sweep test first to make sure that you have a working system before you start testing for PIM. In this case, the white cable is going to a system that I've created for demonstrations, which is two five meter cables with a PIM problem in the middle. And when we do our standard sweep testing, in this case, I'm doing my measurement which is going to be a return loss measurement. It looks very good. My pass-fail limit is at 18 dB return loss, and the performance looks great. Normally, if I was doing site acceptance, I would go into a distance default return loss measurement. And normally, you would take the, the, the uh, disconnect from the antenna and measure your distance defaults. In this case, I'm just going to show you that I'm doing my DTF measurement. My pass-fail limit is at 25 dB, and this looks good. I can save this measurement and then use it later in the PIM measurements in order to overlay the two features. But let's just now go into the menu now and change this over to a PIM analyzer measurement. While that's happening, I'll switch the input from the cable and antenna analyzer and now connect my PIM analyzer. And with PIM, we have to be concerned about how tight the connectors are. We don't want the connection right at the antenna or right at the instrument to be the source of passive intermodulation. So I've now connected it over to the passive to the to the PIM test analyzer. And in PIM mode, the standard test for verifying whether an instrument is good or bad from a PIM standpoint is a test we call PIM versus time. We turn it on, and as you can see, we have a failing result. The next question is: where is it failing? So with a single button push, I go into my distance to PIM measurement mode, start the distance to PIM test. Wait about four seconds, and we have an answer. And our answer is that it thinks the problem is at 4.8 meters. So that's pretty good. On a five meter cable, we now know that our PIM problem is probably at the end of that five meter cable. But because we have the ability to measure our sweep tests with the same instrument, I can load a trace using the trace menu, load a distance default trace, and so any one of the previous distance default measurements that I did, I can now overlay on the same measurement. And so now I can see that here is my, my distance default trace. It's a very high, high resolution measurement telling me exactly where all my RF connectors are. And I can see there's my input. There's the second RF connector, and obviously that's where the PIM is located. So very, very quickly, we have the ability to use both distance to fault and distance to PIM to help us more quickly find and eliminate PIM problems in the site.